You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, Lucha Central Weekly. And welcome to the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. As you might have noticed, I am not Miranda Morales. She is not with us this week, but I am Dashing Dusty Murphy. And you know who I have with me? Who? Who? (laughs) Brendan Barr! That's who! Even with only one of you doing it, it sounds ridiculous, and I love it. (laughs) That's half the charm. (laughs) We're yeah, a, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say yeah. We've just got a. We're doing just doing a quick shot for you this week because we're trying to stay consistent and get product out for you guys. And again, we apologize for not being as weekly as the name implies, but we're getting there. So yeah. uh, go ahead and tell them what we're doing this week, Dusty. Yeah, this week we've got the results of AAA and Tempe. That was a big show. You know, AAA's first big American show that kind of ties in. To our second half of the news, Vikingo, he's going to be in America, but there's some weird AAA rules about not being allowed to film Vikingo or air film of Vikingo. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, a lot of wild stuff going on. But first, we'll talk about the AAA show in Tempe. Brendan was there. He's going to give us a rundown of the results. Big news you know, had kind of a big star show up, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so there was a lot of stuff going on. First off, as we had established many times on this, it was in the brand new uh, Mullet uh, Mullet Arena in Tempe, Arizona, which is going to be the home of uh, the Arizona State Sun Devils, as well as the Phoenix Coyotes. It is a fantastic venue. I got in there early in the afternoon, just got to kind of, Walk around and it is, it's great. Uh, Kevin kept saying that, uh, we need more arenas like this around the country for like mid-size promotions of wrestling because it's the perfect size. There's not a bad seat for the hope, the hoped for 5,000 people that, uh, we didn't quite yeah. get there. I'll just be honest. We did, we did. There were good seats and it looked full, but nobody, like, I, I could, I bounced between being ringside in the upper bowl during the show and being a, in the upper bowl was, was a wonderful view. The wrestlers were still very bigger than life, but I, you could actually see them instead of seeing the back of some, somebody's head when they stood up. So, you know, all around good seats. Uh, they, uh, they started us off with a, a trios match, which had a semi-local wrestler, La Perushke, who's a bit of an exotico, and the crowd actually went nuts for him. So you could tell this wasn't a large fly-in crowd. This wasn't like, uh, uh, to yeah. compare it to Expo Lucha, where the, a lot of people don't necessarily know the local kids that are getting their breaks, but uh, they all knew and they were all excited. Um Perushka was teamed with Mascarita Sagrada and Willie Mack, and they went up against Demos, King Drago, and Latigo. Uh, so a little bit of a kind of a hodgepodge heel thing there. Uh, knowing that some of this is because of visa issues, you just kind of rolled with it. Yeah. Uh, King Drago, also a local wrestler. Uh, Miranda and I were talking about this. He spells it with a, he spells it D-R-A-K-O, I believe. But the Tron looked like a, a G to me, so when I wrote my results down, it looks <laughs> like he is Drago's boss. But I, <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, like how Bowser was King Koopa. <laughs> yeah, he, he was both. So <laughs> maybe Drago can beat King Drago someday. <laughs> maybe. Place this match. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. For now, there can be only one Drago, and he will be king. <laughs> Drago numero uno. <laughs> uh, this is this was kind of a typical AAA opening match. You had lots of young, exciting people that all were trying to get their spots in. Willie Mack had a dance off with with uh, Masquerita Sagrada, but to start off the match. I mean, you know, I love can... Mascarita Sagrada. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so. Well, and Willie Mack, too. <laughs> right. So I mean, Willie Mack treasures. started with the sexy dancing and Mascarita Sagrada needed to get involved. So then they just sort of had a dance off. <laughs> well, and, you know, Mascarita has to get some love that night, too. Right? Like, he's lonely I... after the show. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, you know, it was a fun match. It was it was. I do need to point out that the crowd was instantly hot, and they stayed hot all night. So uh, also good job there. Like in the, that's not something I see in every indie show. So love that. Then we had a little bit of a uh, conversation, shall we say? Uh, a wrestler slash MMA uh, star, Cain Velasquez, came out. He wanted – he was – ostensibly he was trying to say thank you to the fans for supporting him during his hard, his hard times, which he was referencing his personal life issues. We don't need to get into that in the moment. But they got – he didn't get very far into that before Sam Adonis, Tarus, and um, – uh, why am I – Gringo Loco, uh, interrupted the whole thing. They, they, uh, came out. They told, basically, Sam said that he, he was the star. This is, AAA is his home. He had, you know, 30 seconds to get out of the ring or they were going to turn him into a bloody mess. And, uh, of course, you know, Kane didn't take kindly to that. The uh, scrum started and of all people, Blue Demon and, <laughs> Pagano came out and like why those two would come out together to save Kane Velasquez is beyond me, but I, I'm now involved in this tag, this trio. This is, they need to do more matches. Well, I'm like, if those are the guys that come up to back up, they're coming out to back up Kane Velasquez, like, shit, don't mess with Blue Demon and Pagano. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're gonna get murdered! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, Blue Demon's got a hammer and he's not afraid to use it. <laughs> and Pagano, I mean, I think he nearly murdered Chessman at a uh, an event that I I still only half remember because I couldn't watch it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, matches. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, again, uh, for for those of us who who knew what was going on, kind of predictable, but still very fun. Then we had a ladies match. We had Lady Shawnee and the new sexy star coming out against Cheek Tormenta and Lady Maravilla. Uh, the, uh, the, the story was that Shawnee seemed to have a leg injury. Um, uh, but, uh, you, the, the Lady Shawnee and sexy star came out on top. That's all you really needed with that one is good match. And then we had a, a trios match with NGD, Cuatro, Forastero, and Sanson coming out. There was a slight little change pre-show because of flight issues. So now it was a team of Ares, Dave the Clown, and Commander against them. And uh, my goodness, Dave the Clown is a big, big boy. I did not realize when I saw him on TV that he was really that big. <laughs> like, That's so cool. <laughs> I mean, like, because it makes this creepy clown thing so much more believable if he's like a big, imposing guy. Yeah, yeah, no, like I was, he was totally has the creepy clown thing down. I get it now. Like, and he had, uh, he had dreadlocks on his mask this time. It was just all around good. Um, it, not the match it would have been with Mister Iguana on that team, because then you would have had Aries, Mister Iguana, and Commander, so you would have had. A bunch of young, very athletic, very likable guys uh, going up against uh, the the most dastardly trio in all of wrestling, in my opinion, at this moment. So, 
but still very fun match. Uh, Commander is inhuman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's seeing, seeing his madness in person. So his, his, uh, ring walkout when they were introducing him, he went to the far side of the ring and stood on the ropes for the whole introduction. Just <laughs> in the, in the middle, like, just <laughs> like it was no big deal. I'm just hanging out here on the rope. And then bounced off when they said his name. Like, unbelievable stuff. Uh, and, uh, it, this was for the trio's titles. So the NGD did successfully retain the, the match, uh, retain the title, but it was, uh, it was, it was again a fun match. Uh, some people are reporting that they thought it was match of the night. I'm not going to, I'm not sure if I, I, I disagree or disagree, uh, but I really did have strong feelings of liking that one. And then we got, uh, very quickly too, we got Blue Demon Jr., Kane Velasquez, and Pagano against Gringo Loco, Sam Madonis, and Tarus. And, uh, it was everything you wanted. They, uh, you had Sam Madonis refusing to wrestle against Kane Velasquez for the early parts of the match. Uh, so every time Kane got in, he would, uh, back over to the corner and tag somebody in, sometimes when they didn't want to. It was good stuff. <laughs> uh, and then the crowd went absolutely nuts when Kane finally got the, like a hot tag and he just threw some clotheslines. They, uh, they were absolutely behind having Kane Velasquez there. They wanted to see more of this and they, they they were down with it. So, uh, I think AAA has found a good avenue for having, uh, um, Bucha on this side of the, of the fence. You have Kane Velasquez, who's a recognizable commodity, uh, and, uh, you know, put him in there with some real vets like Blue Demon and Pagano, uh, to cover his weaknesses, and you have a banger of a main event, or a semi-main yeah. event. Um, I do have to give a special shout out to Sam Adonis's, uh, Tron video when he came out. It's just all, it was just all images of, uh, Mexico being eliminated from the World Cup with his face superimposed <laughs> over it. Uh, Sam is the perfect <laughs> asshole. Like, I don't know how he does it, but it's, everything he does is just solid gold. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, uh, our main event of the evening was Hijo del Vikingo and Pentagon Jr. against Daga and Flip Gordon. So Daga returning, um, he has long hair and even bigger muscles now. I barely recognized him. I kept looking at the Tron going, where's Daga? <laughs> this, this wow. jacked guy with long hair was in the middle of the ring, but as soon as he started wrestling, I recognized him right away. Um, and the, this was the main, uh, and this is going to, so the, the face is one on this, Vikingo and Pentagon, like, the real story for us at this point, because we're kind of removed from the event, is that this also is now setting precedent for the other thing that Dusty was going to be talking about, which is being called by some people the Vikingo rule about using Vikingo here in the States. And this show obviously doesn't apply to that, because I've already seen footage of this on Triple A's official YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, it was a good match. It was a fun match. It was fantastic to finally get to see Vikingo live. Pentagon was wearing his Joker gear, so I knew Dusty would appreciate that. Yes, I saw the pictures. <laughs> like, oh, so cool. <laughs> and it feels like he wears that when he wants to signify that it's a special match or a big deal. You know, he's really yeah. giving you what you want. And, and I love that. Yeah, my, it, it was very cool. My biggest complaint about this was that we got United States Indies Pentagon Jr. and not AAA Pentagon Jr. Like he was wrestling like, like he always does in the Indies. So I, the way I've seen him yeah. dozens of times before, which is fine. It's good. I still enjoy those, but I really, really wanted to see him. Be the aggressive breaker of bones, 
Yes. Of, yeah. Right. I want to see that, like Lucha Underground, <laughs> arm breaking, like spooky Pentagon. Yeah. Like that's what I want to see. Exactly. But uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna go to that segue though. That we have a Kingo in this match, in a match that AAA has used for promotion and televised and put on their YouTube channel. But Dusty. Is anybody else like GCW or any of the other independent promotions <laughs> that have booked him going to be able to do that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, news broke as of the day we're recording this that there was, you know, what's being called the Vikingo rule. And GCW announced that, you know, their show, um, December the 16th that he, that Vikingo would be facing Blake Christian, but also, that it would not be appearing on the fight stream. GCW, I guess, was the first company to book him and have this come up, but they had to be the ones to announce like there is a Bikingo rule. AAA will not allow it, will not allow any Bikingo match to be recorded or streamed, no video on demand, nothing. If it's recorded and if Bikingo's in it, AAA owns it. That's part of the deal. And apparently that's affected a lot of his bookings over the, you know, like spring that he might have had lined up. A lot of companies weren't terribly thrilled with the idea. And well, yeah. So let me give you a little bit of perspective from the, uh, <clears throat> from the, the, the management side of a independent promotion that's paying a, a large fee to have a very big star on the show. Uh, yes, he will get butts and seats, but if you're putting any investment, he will sell so many captures of your video on demand. Like you, you will get so much more eyes on your product just by having him. He could come out, wave the American flag, and then go back to the battle, to the locker room, and you would still have more views on that show than you would have if you hadn't put him on the show. So, yeah, being told you can't have him is. <laughs> is the worst thing for uh, any indie promotion. Well, and you think about how he's building up his brand and like they're really excluding him to his detriment, maybe to triple A's benefit, but definitely to the Kingo's detriment. The thing I think you can compare it to is like bands on the internet. And think of like music you found on the internet that you never, that your friends didn't know about, that you didn't know about, that you'd never heard before you found on the internet. And that became music that you loved. It's the same thing with the Kingo. People are going to find those clips and fall in love and be like, that's my guy. He's my guy. And he's not getting that opportunity. It doesn't hurt AAA, but it doesn't, it does hurt the Kingo. But it also doesn't benefit AAA if they had, you know, like Vikingo and, the, you know, AAA champion Vikingo, Mega Campion champion Vikingo. I I feel like it would do a lot of good for him and for AAA. But so so uh, based on what I read and what I can see, I would say that AAA's basic idea is that they need something to keep. Triple A unique in the United States because you're competing with every single indie and it'll be hard. I'll use the example. They haven't announced this, but we all know that they would Triple A would love to be at WrestleMania weekend, right? But that means you're competing with GCW, you're competing with FSW, you're competing with every indie as well as the WWE to get fans attention. And so you need, you know, you would need this star like Vikingo to be unique to your show to, in order to do that. The flip side to what Dusty is talking about is if you have him appearing in more American indies between now and then in particular, if that's the next big United States show you want to do, I don't know. They haven't even said they want to do that, but everybody is positive they do. Uh, is you would have, you would have him appear in a few places, have some big name matchups, have clips of that, of him and Nick Wayne, uh, which is the match we're getting this weekend, and we probably won't be able to put up any clips of it now from the sound of it, which sucks, cause 
You know, but you put that stuff out on the internet, all those, all the fans of Nick Wayne are going to see this Vikingo guy. They're going to be like, I want to see that guy. And then they'll, if they're already in LA, they'll go to that AAA show, which is exactly what they want. I don't, <laughs> I think it's short sighted. I think what they were trying to do, I, I get it, but I don't think it, it is going to work the way they think it's going to work. Yeah, I don't either. And and I don't think the exclusivity of seeing him on AAA for the first time is going to be a big enough boost to their sales because anybody that's interested in Vikingo has already seen video of Vikingo. But they could be using didn't like indie stuff to build up hype for him, build up his yep. record, how many defenses and Yeah. Oh make yeah, it a big imagine deal. Imagine if that match he had signed for GCW, he was defending the AAA title. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that would have been so cool. Yeah. No, there's, they, they could have done, and I think that in today's social media, that would have been better because that would have been almost a guaranteed viral series of clips because now the title's on the line. This has something, it has some meaning. It's not just two guys that are really good at wrestling. Fighting at the end of the night. Well, it has believability. Wow. You know, like, it's just, yeah, I mean, mm. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I hesitate, feelings. <laughs> yeah. I hesitate to go down that road, but, uh, I feel like believability is not as important to many fans of, of modern wrestling. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, I don't, you still have to promote, you still have to promote like it is, basically. You have to promote to get people to, to buy tickets. It, Cause whenever I go to a city and I tell them what I'm doing, I'm going to a wrestling show, they'll ask me, they'll be, you know, they'll ask the usual things like, is Rey Mysterio gonna be there? Uh, or do I even know Rey Mysterio? Cause for some reason they think just because they only remember him from the 2000s that, <laughs> Nobody else does. Uh, <laughs> I've run into that. Yeah, but uh, but also uh, like anybody who's interested in the show, they'll ask like, you know, is there any big fights? Is there a title match? So right, like that's how you get casuals to become more interested. Yeah, there's a title, the Mega Championship from Mexico, from the second or first largest promotion of Mexico, depending on how you do your metrics, is on the line here in in Los Angeles for the first time ever. Right? Like that that alone adds enough uh in gravitas that I'm interested in that card now, right? And without knowing who's defending it against who or what the you know how much crazy flippy stuff they're gonna do. <laughs> Yeah. And it will be crazy flippy stuff. Having seen it live, it's even more crazy. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing, like, and, and I can see too, but I, it, I don't think it's going to draw any more tickets than it would to Vikingo. But to see something like that in person, I haven't seen Vikingo in person, but to see some of the stuff they do in person is just stunning. Like you see it all the time. The simplest stuff. On TV, you know, or on the internet, and you see it, you kind of take it for granted. But when you're in person, and you see how fluid that something like an arm drag is. You're like, oh my god, you know, like it, you just, it's incredible. But then when they do the flips and some of the twists and maneuvers and top rope stuff, yeah. I mean, you can't imagine how incredible it is. Well, and, and yeah, just like we were talking about earlier, it just changes a lot of things. Your perspective changes. Yes, like, absolutely. you know, seeing, seeing Dave in person, Dave the Clown, I have so much, I mean, we were already kind of building up a lot of, of respect for Dave the Clown, but like, I have so much, the character, I get it now, I get, I get what he's doing, and, and it may work so much better now that I've seen it, that he's big and, and kind of scary, and it's the same thing with Vikingo, when you see that he's, not very big, like he's, he's not just short, he's still very small, but he's, Wiry him through his muscles. Yeah, have muscles. yeah I was gonna <laughs> like, say, he still looks like he could kill you with his bare hands. <laughs> but but seeing that and seeing, like you said, seeing the fluidity, seeing the the uh, just you know five seconds or because on TV you're you're already your suspension of disbelief is on there because you you know you saw a giant green guy throwing a car 
and the show before this. So it's like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it was, it, yeah, it's amazing. And, uh, that needs to, be, I think people need to be reminded more that live wrestling is going to be better and live lucha libre is not i don't want to say nothing like what you see on tv but it's a very different experience even when you're in the arena that they're filming the tv show at yeah it really (laughs) is the i mean wrestling in person used to be such a common thing like that was part of the deal like the tv show sold the tickets but now it's kind of vice versa you know i mean like the tv show is the big deal not the tickets and you're really missing out if you don't go in person especially at some of these smaller shows the wwe show it's it's impressive AEW shows in my experience in my area are in a smaller arena a little more impressive because you can get a little closer but the locals the indies when you see these things up close is just ridiculous like it's unbelievable how impressive it is and you can feel the momentum and when they hit that ring you can feel it and see it and yeah it's just incredible and and really i mean i guess i'm really advocating for going to see live wrestling but <laughs> yeah, that's but what that, we've, we've shifted to that at this yeah point. <laughs> but genuinely i mean like it's so incredible in person and people should be checking it out, especially if you get the chance to see Vikingo at some of these shows, because the only way you're going to see him is live. If he's in your area, that's the only way to see him is live. And so, you know, you're really missing out if you don't go check him out. Yeah. I mean, especially with that. And so I actually am mildly hoping that this rule does have that now that we've talked this through does have that effect and get more people to just go see live shows yeah you know i would now, be now excited to see them if you can't i mean i would absolutely go but you know what i mean like if i was even casually interested in somebody with that kind of <laughs> yeah not hype necessarily but that kind of build around them it does build a little bit of interest and, and i mean We've said it a lot on the show, but he is more or less the chosen one, the next generation. I don't remember right now if he won last year's Rising Star Award, but I, I know we were did. talking about it. Yeah, uh, it, it's, he's been on the rise. This is his moment at this point. He's he's going to be on television in at least two different countries. There's a chance for a third because, uh, you know, Japan loves to bring luchadors in, too. Uh, he's, I mean, we're just all over the place. It's, he's, he's here. He's arrived. He's not, he's not the rising star this year. And we may, we may even see that Kenny Omega match the way things are going. So who knows? Yeah. I, I mean, we said this last year too, but I really think the promise for Vikingo is very, very bright in 2023. Well, I mean, we we were not wrong with the with what happened in 2022. He had uh, several match of the year candidate matches. Oh yeah, He's, he was in multiple promotions. He burst into the United States and and became a phenomenon. So yeah, we're we were not wrong last year. I just think uh, even though. Uh, like I just got done saying he's arrived to your point. He's there's so much more he can still do. <laughs> right that's it's not the end of a kingo story it's just kind of somewhere in the middle where he's still going to be a giant name and a huge bigger than life personality that everybody needs to to see yeah <clears throat> excuse me it's just really incredible what he's done this year and and next year is going to be his year for sure and that actually ties in to our next show a little bit of hype where you come into the end of the year. And as you know, we always have our end of the year kind of roundup where we decide on the best match of the year, best luchador, best luchadora, all kinds of stuff. Tag team. We even have a cookie sheet award for kind of the most interesting <laughs> moment. And, you know, cause like the cookie sheets, they come out triple a Brendan named it a <laughs> genius cookie sheet award and uh, a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, that'll be next week as you're listening to this. 
And uh, but we have social media. Miranda isn't here, so I will run down hers first. She is on Instagram at the hashtag Miranda spelled out hashtag one word there. Um, and then she's also on Facebook. And I am on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dusty Murphy and Instagram at Dusty Murphy. And Brendan, do you want to tell our listeners where they can find you on social All media? Right. Yeah, um, I am 321 T-Shirt Guy. That's the number, 321. And T-Shirt Guy is all spelled out. And I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And I'm still all over the Twitters. Elon can't chase me away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We do also need to give the shout-out. We didn't do the copy read this week, but Lucha Central. This is the Lucha Central Weekly. Um, We we can... uh, just briefly go over the the idea. You want to go to over to Lucha Central Weekly, uh, Lucha Central, for all of your news, polls, and awards. Lucha Central sponsors this show. You can find our direct link there. Uh, but they also have they have results from the the Phoenix show. They had res- I was just over there. They had results from CMLL's uh, the recent tournament. On the news there, they, uh, they they give you all the news you, you need. They give you all the polls and interaction. Uh, they, they host all of the Lucha Central podcast network. So thank you for, for being our, our host there. And, uh, as we love to, to point out during the copy read, uh, it's all free. So go on over there yeah. and check it out too. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in and join us next week. And we will see you at the same week of time, the same week of time. Los cuatro rudos